Wednesday, FMF, the Mexican Federation, announcing that Gerardo Torrado had been fired as general sporting director, a role that the three-time World Cup participant had held since around 2017. Also out, Ignacio Hierro, director of the national teams. Also out, Luis Perez, under-20 coach, who failed to qualify for the U-20 World Cup and Olympics. Monica Vergara, the women's national team coach, her fate still to be decided. As for why, let's hear from the president, Yonde Luisa. Los resultados obtenidos en las últimas semanas por la selección sub-20 varonil y la selección mayor femenil, que significaron un duro golpe para el fútbol mexicano y sobre todo para nuestra afición, nos obligan a actuar en consecuencia. Después de realizar un análisis a profundidad y en una plática de mutuo acuerdo con los involucrados, decidimos llevar a cabo una reestructuración en la Federación Mexicana de Fútbol, la cual implica las siguientes acciones. Gerardo Torrado deja su cargo como director general deportivo. Ignacio Hierro deja su cargo como director deportivo de selecciones nacionales. Y Luis Pérez deja su cargo como director técnico de la selección sub-20 varonil. En el caso de Mónica Vergara, directora técnica de la selección femenil mayor, será la nueva dirección deportiva quien haga una evaluación y determine las acciones a seguir. Joining us now from Mexico City, Mauricio Pedrosa. Mal, great to have you with us. First of all, just paint me a little picture. What, what's the vibe down there? You're right now in the ESPN studios, right? Is it, is it all panic stations or what? It's, uh, yeah, panic is the right word. <laughs> it, the, the, the pessimism. And you know our, our colleagues here in Mexico City are not the most optimistic when it comes to talk about the Mexican national team. Well, the pessimism that I sense here, I haven't felt it in a long, long time. But, I mean, a lot to talk about. I, I'll, I'll tell you this. There's a few fellas near me that were very, very surprised by the decision-making mm. of Yon de Luisa. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll deep dive on that. All right, so let's get into the big decision from Jon De Luisa, and it has to do with Gerardo Torrado. That's the big name that everybody sees. So, Mao, do you think he was deserving of being fired right now? Yes, he had to go. Um, the moment his decision-making actually hurt the pockets of the owners, that's when he had to go. The fact that the Mexican national team is not going to be a part of the Olympic Games, the fact that the Mexican national team is not going to be a part of an under-20 World Cup, that all represents a lot of money that the Mexican Federation is not going to earn. So the moment you mess with the business, you're done. And his decision-making was a lot, was giving a lot of head-scratching to a lot of people. Why did he appoint Luis Perez when he barely had any experience? Why did he let Monica Vergara make decisions like leaving out Charlene Corral? So the fact that he had very, very little control with those teams, I think it just spoke volumes of uh, the mishandling of the national teams. Therefore, he had to go. You know, it's it's kind of funny. I mean, it's not funny. It's kind of crazy to me that we're, we're talking about a team that finished, I'm talking about the men's team for a second, that finished second in World Cup qualifying, okay? Only due to goal differential. And they won a Olympic medal not too long ago. And here we are saying, he's out, he's got to go. But it shows you the pressure, it shows you the culture that is Mexican football. And he absolutely had to go. Mal mentioned the money that he was going to cost the owners, and that's pretty much all you need to be on your way out. But the buck stops with him. His role is to take care and oversee all the national teams. So he's not only responsible for the full national team, he's responsible for the men's, women's, the U-20s, the U-23s, the U-17s, et cetera, et cetera. A lousy to loan tournament. I don't even know what that tournament's called anymore, but they had a lousy to loan tournament. Uh, the U-20s failed to qualify for the World Cup and failed to qualify for the next Olympic Games. And then the women, in their own hosted CONCACAF tournament, couldn't score one goal. They couldn't score one goal hosting the tournament. And, and Mal mentioned the off-the-field aspect of how things have been handled on both sides. We can go to Tata Martino and the blacklisted players. We can go to Charin Corral being blacklisted by the Mexican Federation. Head scratch after head scratching moment. It, the buck stopped with him. He had to go. What's the priority? What's the priority here for the Mexican Federation? Let's be real honest. If we looked at their budgets, do they, do, are they really prioritizing the women's national team in the U-20s? No, they're prioritizing well, the men's national team. It's going to make team. money, Seb. Let me, just, let me just make this point. If Torrado needed to be fired, why four months before the World Cup? Why not after they lost in the Nations League in the Gold Cup to a C team, right? If, if, if this is the problem, yeah. if we're going to fire him, why not then? That, this, to me, is, 
is you may make the case that he's deserving to be fired. I think you might ask if he was deserving to be hired. This is a guy who went straight from Indy 11 in the USL straight into yes. a, a management position at the FMF. And you can question the people that took that decision. But to me, to, to, to fire him four months before the World Cup, no, 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 no. The priority here has always been the men's senior national team. That's very clear by how the Federation acts. And if, if it was good enough to get you through the Gold Cup, if it was good enough Nations League, good enough qualifying, why are you letting him go now? That's what I don't understand, Mal. The, the answer is very simple. And I have to go back to my very first argument. He hurt the business. How much the money, how much money are you going to make from a U-20 World Cup, honestly? The you're Olympics? You're sponsorships. You're going to lose a cycle oh, of players. Do, do, not, lose... do, not, do <laughs> not forget this aspect. Do not forget this aspect. Uh, the big TV networks here in Mexico pay a lot of money for the rights of broadcasting the Olympic Games. Which do you, you know what's the one sport that the fans actually get to watch during the Olympics? That's like when the Mexican national team soccer soccer team plays. And that's it. So that's why they spend all that money. They're going to lose millions and millions of dollars because of that. Why didn't they fire Gerardo Torrado a year ago after losing the Gold, gold Cup, Nations League, World Cup qualifier games because the business was still booming for the national team. So the, the moment you mess with the pocket, you're done and you're gone. That's the only reason why he was let go. Yeah, it's a little unfair of, of, of Seb calling out Gerardo Torrado like that because the first few years were very successful and I think the business as usual was going on and he was doing a good job of that. You, you mentioned why now because people are foaming at the mouth. They want blood. Mm. And if Is it's that, not Gerardo Torrado, yes. Is that yes. how you take yes. big decisions? Hold on, hold on. Listen, if it's not yes. Gerardo Torrado, if, if, if Young Luisa doesn't take action on Gerardo Terrado and company, guess who's on the line? Guess who's next on the line next? Okay, that, that, that tells me that he doesn't deserve to be fired. That tells me that the person who deserves to be fired is a little bit further no, 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 no. up the chain. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.